the book of Jude, if you have your Bibles. Jude chapter or chapter one and uh, verse three. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. One verse, a uh, very important passage of Scripture, uh, subject being this morning, faith delivered, faith delivered. Uh, first word that we find here in this uh, subject is the word faith. The faith, the word faith comes from the Greek word uh, persuasion, that is credence or moral conviction of religious truth or the truthfulness of God or a religious teacher, especially reliance upon Christ for salvation, Ab abstractly, uh, abstractly constancy in such profession by extension the system of religious truth itself assurance belief believe faith fidelity the second word is delivered meaning in the Greek to surrender, that is to yield up and trust, transmit, to bring forth, to commit, to deliver up, to give, to recommend. And so... So we have, we have here, we have here in this, we have quite a lot of things that could be said from this, these two words, faith delivered. In the passage, as he writes he says uh, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation it was needful for me to write unto you exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints this is the faith that was once delivered it was it is said to be given it is faith that was once delivered in Philippians chapter number one Philippians chapter 1 and verse 29. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. Notice the wording here. It is given 
unto you. In Ephesians chapter 2, Ephesians chapter 2, probably a very familiar passage of Scripture here. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Faith is a gift. Our relationship with Jesus Christ, our salvation, it is something that we cannot merit, it is not a faith that we have worked for, it's not something that we have sought after even, it is the faith that was once delivered. Praise God for that, there's nothing we could do to ever gain it, no work that we could have done to have gotten a hold of it, nothing that we could have ever done to have ever gotten it. But we also want to notice that that's not everything that is said here, is it? Uh, he says not just that the faith once delivered, but or not that it was delivered only, but it was the faith that was once delivered. It was given one time. Once delivered, not delivered last week, last month last year, and then re-delivered, but once delivered. Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 6. Philippians chapter 1 and verse number 6, it says this, Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath began a good work in you will perform it, until the day of Jesus Christ. Make no mistake about it. Once the Lord has begun a work in you. You will not be lost. You will not have to uh, be saved again. There is no danger of losing your salvation. Absolutely. Absolutely. There may be times in your life where uh, you may be not as close to the Lord as you used to, but you're always safe in the Father's hands. You're always secure as far as your salvation goes. God's pen with which He wrote your name in the book of life, it does not have an eraser. God loved you once. He'll love you forever. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 24, Faithful is he that calleth you who also will do it. Listen. Listen. The beauty of this is that where faith is planted, where it is given, where it has been, uh, where 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 it has been gifted, it will never be destroyed. It is cared for by the power and the grace of Almighty God. We didn't get it. We didn't earn it by works. We'll not keep it by works either. It's by the grace of Almighty God. We'll not lose it. No one will take it away. Romans chapter number 8. Romans chapter 8 verses 35 through 39. He says, Who shall separate us from the love of Christ shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword as it is written 
For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. The apostle writing under inspiration of the Spirit, he says, he says, I'm persuaded, I'm confident of this thing, that nothing, nothing can separate us from the love of God. Not death, not life, not angels, not principalities, not powers, not things present, not whatever's going on in your life now, not things to come, not, not whatever's going to happen, not height, nor depth, nor any other creature. Just in case I've forgotten something, or maybe something's going on that I don't know about in your life, nothing can separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus. The faith once delivered. It is cared for by Almighty God. Some folks talk about their salvation as if it can be lost like a man might lose his car keys. But folks, it ain't like that. It ain't like that at all. Because this faith that he's talking about, a faith that is grounded in the Scriptures, it is not the invention of mankind. What we preach, what we believe, what we are grounded in is of Almighty God. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, 1 Timothy chapter number 6, verse 20, O Timothy, keep that which is committed to thy trust, avoiding profane and vain babblings and oppositions of science, falsely so called. <coughs> Excuse me. That which is committed to thy trust. Of this faith, it's the opposite of profane and vain babblings. It's the opposite of fables and storytelling. Romans chapter 3, Romans chapter 3, verse number 2. says, uh, much every way chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. The oracles of God. These are, these, these are things that came from God. This isn't some idea that was invented by man. I love science. The thing about science is that science scientists often change their mind about things. There's often new discoveries, uh, and, 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 and man changes, and, and, and if you get a science textbook from 50 years ago, it differs from one that was 100 years ago, and differs from one that's today on a lot of different topics of science. But God's Word, the faith that was once delivered, it doesn't change. 
it doesn't change. You and I, we are talking about the faith that was once delivered. It doesn't change. It's not to be altered. There's nothing new here. If you come to the worship service to find some or hear news, hoping to hear some new thing, you'd be disappointed. At least as long as I'm preaching. Well, sometimes we hear things that we haven't heard before, but the fact is that the truth doesn't change. There are things that we learn that is new to us, but it really was always there. The faith once delivered, it is just that. It was once delivered. It's never altered, never changes. And that brings me to my next point. Who was it delivered to? Well, it was delivered to the saints. To the saints. If you go back there to Jude, verse 3, he says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Who are the saints of God? The saints of God it are the people of God. You see, this faith, it wasn't given to everybody. Spend, a, spend an hour out in the world and you'll find that out. Spend a few minutes in customer service and find out not everybody has the faith. Second, Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Stand in the grocery line when it's real busy. To check out Walmart or something. You'll find out not everybody has the faith. Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Verse number 2. He says, after asking for prayer... He says, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. He says, pray for us. Pray for us. That the word of the Lord will have free course, be glorified, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men, for all men have not faith. That's a fact. And those folks who don't have faith... To them, to them, they're not going to earnestly contend for something that they don't have. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse number 3. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost. In whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Not all men have faith, but to you, child of God, to me, this is addressed that we should earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And that's what we're to do. Earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. This is something that is the duty of all people. It's not the duty of the pastor. Only, certainly it is the duty of the pastor, but not only, not only the duty of the pastor, not the duty of the preachers only, 
or the missionaries, but the duty of all saints. That word contend, that, that's a word that means to struggle for, to earnestly contend for is what uh, Strong's wrote. So I looked it up in Webster's. Get a, get a fuller definition of it. Webster's 1828 said that it means to strive, to use earnest efforts to obtain or to defend and preserve. Now is that time for the saints of God to come to the defense of the perfect faith that has been committed to our trust. If we don't do it, who will? And while it's been given to the saints of God, and all of God's people are saints, looking at other scripture specifically, there's a specific group of saints that this is for. Turn with me to the book of 1 Timothy chapter 3. First Timothy chapter 3 and verse uh, 15. But if I tarry long that thou mayest know how thou oughtest to behave thyself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and ground of the truth. There's a couple of things that are very, very precious in this world. Uh, one is the Lord's church. The other is the truth. And, uh, and of course, when we tie these things together here in this sermon, of course we could talk about some other precious things, but, but in, in this, tying these things together in this sermon, the Scriptures declare that the church, the Lord's church, the only church that the New Testament recognizes, this church is a column and a base for the truth to bear it up and support it. We, we, the Sovereign Grace Baptist Church and all of the Lord's churches around the world are to publish and proclaim the truth. This is the faith that is once delivered. And whenever you look out at the landscape of what is known today as Christianity, there may be hundreds of different denominations, even in this area. But God has commissioned His people in His church specifically to earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. We publish it. How? Well, we are in the business of preaching, of proclaiming God's truth. And it doesn't always have to be the preacher behind the pulpit. You might be God's mouthpiece when you're at work witnessing to somebody. Or you may be God's mouthpiece for the truth in your home when you draw a line in the sand and you say, no, we're not going to watch this movie. Or, we're, or, or yes, we're going to spend 10 minutes today reading the Word of God rather than playing video games or whatever. We have a lot of different ways that we can proclaim the truth. A lot of us have internet. We can write a blog or post uh, something on, on the World Wide Web to do something. 
that it may be a help to earnestly contend for the faith. We ought not to be argumentative all the time, but certainly we ought to know how to contend for the faith. We ought to know how to uh, how to spread the truth in love and to do it in a way that we'd be a witness in this world that we live in. Uh, you know, sometimes it might just be uh, I know not everybody is as outgoing as I am but it might be just a uh, conversation you have with somebody and just invite them to church. Uh, you never know how the Lord might use that to help help somebody out. Uh, in the book of uh, Jude, in verse 3, as we kind of bring this to a close, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. And if you continue reading this epistle, you find that there's a sense of urgency that he's writing to them about this subject, about this matter. It's something that's needful. I believe it's needful in his day, needful in ours. Uh, we need to be earnestly contending for the faith, to be diligent in uh, Bible studies, prayer, and certainly uh, fellowship with one another, and contending for the faith uh, wherever the Lord may give us opportunity. May the Lord add a blessing to his word. Brother Isaiah, would you please pray for us? Dear God, thank you. Thank you for showing me that family. Please um, watch over Leah with her cough and watch over Molly with her stomach and watch over. Brother Joe and Sister Mary and Brother Azan and Brother Paul and Mamma and them and watch over those who couldn't come to church today for whatever reason that was. Um, watch over um, those who don't know you as their Savior and as their Savior. Doing this and it's gone. Okay. Good.